Good day, everyone. Meteorologist Mark Molnar here. How is everybody doing? Hope everybody's having a great weekend. I want to thank you for joining me for this edition of Meteor Mark's Weather. This is Tropical Edition. We're looking at Invest 92. Invest 92L way out in here into the Atlantic. 50% chance of development through day two. More than a 70% chance now through day seven. Here is the, this is a Cape Verde system. This is pretty early this time of year. Here it is riding pretty far to the south. This is going to continue towards the west and eventually start bending towards the northwest. Now, if we take a look at the latest GFS model here, you can see through the 18th, we go into Sunday and into Monday. Yeah, this system into Tuesday, it's going to really start to strengthen rapidly according to the GFS. And look at that, a pretty strong eye wall starting to form. Uh, this is towards the middle of the week. So we get towards the 22nd. Here are the Lesser Antilles. A stronger system would be great for you guys with the exception for the surf uh, and the waves and whatnot because this would keep this system recurving to find a weakness in the subtropical ridge out here. Here's that big old ridge to the northeast and it would start to pivot uh, towards this weakness you can see in the isobars here. So that would actually help this system recurve adjust to the east of Bermuda as we head towards the 24th, the 25th, and the 26th. So yeah, this is the GFS. Look at that. A nice recurvature for you guys. However, the European model is indicating weaker and further west. Let's take a look at that. So as we take a look at our satellite, our infrared on Invest92L, you can see becoming much more formidable here. Look at that explosion of showers and thunderstorms a little bit closer to the center as well. We got another wave behind it here. It looks pretty impressive. So I wanted to show you our HWRF hurricane model here. Let's take a look and see what exactly is going to happen with this system. So here it is. Hurricane model really blowing this up pretty nicely as well. Let's see which direction our hurricane models are pinwheeling here. Because we know, look at that, 964 millibars. So this is pin, our hurricane model is saying that this is going to blow up pretty fast. Um, so I'd be willing to, you know, lay some money here on this that uh, it's actually probably going to recurve here on the HWRF. And taking a look at our latest HMON model here, let's take a look and see what this system is showing. So here it is. This is the 19th. The system really gets cranking. Definitely a tropical storm here on our HMON model. And let's see how far out we can go with this. What direction is this going to start to pivot? So, you know, it seems like the other models are in the camp of blowing this up a bit stronger. This is a bit further to the southeast, though of the GFS. GFS is like up here. HWRF is like right here. So this is, you know, trending a little bit more uh, towards the southwest. This is a trend we'll have to keep an eye on here. So as we take a look at our European model here, we can get a big sense that, you know, the pattern flow, there's that high pressure right in the middle uh, and to the north of the MDR of the Atlantic here. So as we head through Monday into Tuesday, here's our system here on the European model. You can see it does look a bit weaker here as it heads to the west. And a weaker system usually and always means that this system cannot find a weakness here in the subtropical ridge on the west side of the subtropical high. So essentially, you know, this system does look pretty formidable here on the European model. This is thanks to Tropical Tidbits. Com. Here we go. So as we continue with this system towards the west, towards the Lesser Antilles, you can see, yes, the euro is indeed keeping this weaker and bringing it towards the central Lesser Antilles. What's this mean for the Caribbean? Well, essentially, you know, the system starts to slow down and then you have this other area of high pressure across the western Atlantic and that still helps to re-strengthen the high and re-strengthen this uh, system moving into the uh, Eastern Caribbean here. Now you can see the system does start to weaken as it reaches the island of Espanola. This is a graveyard for many tropical systems because not only is there typically a more wind shear in this environment, but you got those high mountain peaks if the system were to move over the island. Now you see it does more, look more like a wave at this point. You see that big blob of tropical moisture here. And that is going to be really interesting to watch as we go in time because that could also get entrained uh, into the East Coast low here, bring tropical moisture up into the Carolinas and the East Coast, as well as our big old blob of tropical moisture here in a parts of the Caribbean. All right, so as we take a look at the humidity, dry air, whatnot here, there is our system. We also have our system over here uh, into the Caribbean uh, as well. So we got these two systems. Um, this one in here in the Caribbean, not likely to develop uh, too much dry air, too much wind shear. But look at this. Here we go. 
Is there any dry air that's going to affect this system? We'll look here onto the European model first. Um, you can see here in the Caribbean, our Caribbean system is all strung out here, and it's being funneled into this uh, area of low pressure off the southeast coast. This blocking high to the north, you see that. Now, there is a lot of dry air here on the western and northwestern side of the system as well on the European model. And the European model does start to move this system into an area of dry air. You see it starts to look more lopsided as we continue into the Eastern Caribbean. So dry air looks like it's going to be a big factor here uh, if the system remains weaker and further to the west. And as you can see here on the European run, this is a closer look at the Caribbean as the system kind of bends a little bit towards the west-southwest. This is towards Saturday, uh, June 24th. So this would be the time frame of next weekend, not this weekend. And there it is, the moisture associated with it over Puerto Rico, parts of Hispaniola, and the system really starts to wash out, according to the European model, its moisture getting entrained along the southeast coast. And here is our southern Caribbean system. This is a pretty interesting system, although at this point, I don't think it has much chance to develop plenty of convection and heavy rain associated with it. And if we actually put this into motion, you can see where this is going to head. It's going to pivot up the coastline here. It's going to be a coastal hugger right up uh, places like... Uh, uh, Nicaragua, Honduras, uh, and then the tropical moisture continues to the north here. Uh, so it's going to be getting into areas like the Cayman Islands here and just west of Jamaica here. So far, it looks like through the 21st, Jamaica stays fairly dry from it here. It could put that back into motion over the weekend, and then it kind of pivots towards the north here, essentially. So you see a lot of tropical moisture continuing into the western Bahamas and eventually getting into the coastline of Florida here. And that entrains into our low-pressure system here along the U.S. East Coast. Take a look at this. So as we head throughout the new week into late next week as well, you can see we'll start out here the 19th. And the 20th, see that uh, low pressure here across the southeast coast? That's just going to hang out, and that's going to help bring the moisture here from our Caribbean system to the north. You kind of kind of see how the two interact here, and that's going to promote very heavy rains along with this blocking high to the northeast so that this system cannot continue much further to the north. So if we take a look at total liquid equivalent precipitation here across the Caribbean with our Caribbean low, yeah, I want to show you this. Central America, we're getting over 100 millimeters of rainfall here. It's going to be pretty close here to the Cayman Islands. Um, not looking as tremendous as we originally thought, but uh, here you're picking up closer to on the order of 40 to maybe as much as 60 millimeters. Here around Jamaica as well and Cuba. Look at that towards Hispaniola. That's as we get towards... Our next possible system here, European, keeping it rather low into the Caribbean here. This could be, if the European holds true here, this could be a massive rainmaker and mudslide producer here in Hispaniola. That would not be good. And also flooding problems there in Puerto Rico as well. There's our system there across the uh, southeast of the United States. Lots of moisture. Okay, so our future radar as we take it into the overnight, into early Sunday morning, you can see this. Area of low pressure up here in New England, continuing the rain showers across much of New England. It looks like it's ending in eastern New York, upstate New York up there. But we're going to be dealing with some tropical moisture here across parts of the Bahamas and Florida as we go into the overnight. But the big story is going to be these massive thunderstorm complexes, mesoscale convective systems really taking hold here. And as we continue to put this into motion, look at that. Just north of Dallas, Fort Worth, Oklahoma City is just going to be plastered here with tremendous amounts of severe weather a massive derecho event probably likely unfolding here with tremendous damage that continues towards the southeast as we head towards 5 a.m on sunday morning and look at these heavy downpours just to the south of orlando right across the tampa bay area that is looking like some very heavy rain and that's going to be the name of the game as we head through the next couple days into the next week and look at here in the northeast main Parts of New Hampshire continuing with some showers, but much of the northeast clearing out here. You'll just be dealing with some residual smoke, but look at this. As we continue in time here, this is going to be the area 
as we continue into your Sunday. The biggest threat of severe thunderstorms uh, likely across this area. And as we continue in time, you can see, look at that, converging right across southern part of Mississippi, Alabama, and then eventually the Panhandle of Florida. Heavier downpours just off the east coast of Florida. And look at this. This thunderstorm complex tries to make it into Florida with very little success as we head towards uh, 10 p.m. on Sunday. So look at this. We have another area, big system developing behind it here. More severe weather likely developing out of this. And look at this, a nocturnal severe weather event here across the southern states into Alabama, eventually heading into parts of Georgia here. Look at this, the Atlanta area, Montgomery uh, it's just looking really nasty here. This is towards 11 a.m. on Monday morning. So, yeah, looking pretty rough here. Some generalized showers throughout the Tennessee Valley here, the Appalachians. But the big story is going to be this heavy rain that's converging on the southeast. So you're just going to continue to get pummeled here. This is ending at 2 p.m. on Monday. So this is what the future radar looks like. And then more continued heavy rain up into the Carolinas. And just before we continue with your weather segment, I have plenty more weather to show you in this video. Here is a quick word, special announcement from my new affiliate. I am proud to announce that I am now an affiliate with Trilogy Maps. TrilogyMaps.com bringing you the most digital, customizable maps found nowhere else on the internet. These maps are simply stunning. It's an advanced layering system that makes these maps great for making forecast maps with ease or any other maps that you would like to display important information on. The resolution on these maps is simply amazing. From the detail of everything here in the States, and you can also create stunning digital professional layered maps from also across the entire world. And don't forget in checkout, the discount code option, use my code MEDIUMARK, hit apply, and you will get 20% off your order. So if you want the most professional, customizable, and affordable weather maps found nowhere else on the internet, look no further than TrilogyMaps.com. Link in the description down below along with your discount code. So taking a look at the European model here, let's take a look. That system in the northeast moving out. The big deal here I showed you the mesoscale model is this severe weather just continuing across the southeast, continuing to pummel the same areas. And the southeast, it's just going to camp out much of next week. We're just going to continue to see heavy rain, thunderstorms, and then on the southern end, severe weather. There's a big trough. Look at this. This is going to be some beneficial rain and even some mountain snow into western Canada. Still can't catch a break here in eastern Canada with the Quebec wildfires. But as we continue throughout next week, there's Tuesday, Wednesday, high pressure dominating much of the northeast. That's going to help get a little mini heat wave going here across the northeast. Look at this across the southeast. This just doesn't look good. I'm going to get into rainfall totals for you here. It's looking pretty nasty here. And there is that Bermuda high uh, kicking to the southeast here. So it's becoming kind of like a massive Bermuda high that's going to take over. And it's just going to continue to funnel that tropical moisture from the Atlantic the Gulf of Mexico, and the Caribbean. So that's looking like a tremendous, horrible start to summer here across much of the southeast. Jeff, definitely, this is through Saturday, June 24th, and some severe weather outbreaks here across the northern plains. So a little bit, giving you a little bit break from Texas southward. But yeah, we're going to be dealing, we're going to be socked in with tremendous amounts of tropical moisture along the east. And look at that. It almost looks like the ring of fire here around this subtropical high. You're starting to actually... Next week on the 25th, get some showers and thunderstorms way up into the northeast as well and with the daytime heating. So severe thunderstorms continue across the southeast and southern states through Tuesday, June 27th. So as we take a look at total liquid equivalent precipitation here, this time of year it's all liquid. So as we just stop here, we'll stop early, you know, midday Monday here, look at across the southeast. Yeah, you're seeing quite a bit of rain up here in the New England. You're going to see anywhere from an inch maybe up to two inches parts of Maine, uh, inch just into western and central New England. So some beneficial rains here. Most of this in upstate New York is ending, and we'll move to the northeast. But look at this as we put this into time. We're just going to go through the rest next week. 
Yeah, this is pretty crazy here. So, yeah, we're going to start to get into some real tropical moisture as we head through the mid to latter part of the week. This up here in the northeast, a lot of this is next weekend as we start to get that subtropical moisture surge into the northeast. All right, so I'm going to show you region by region here. This takes us through the whole week. Look at this. Yeah, this is some staggering rainfall totals. This is a massive area of 5 to 8 inches of rain, especially into the yellow zones, 7, you know, 8 five even to north carolina here approaching nine inches this is crazy and as we get into the mid-atlantic here let's take a look yeah there is the central appalachian so as we get through the next week here you're gonna be looking at a enhanced risk of some heavy rain here that's going to be the bullseye as a lot of this tropical moisture bumps up against the appalachians you see here in the mid-atlantic that's mostly with next weekend's tropical surge and as we head into the northeast look at this the ohio valley you're just going to remain dry as a bone here for the most part. This takes us through Wednesday, uh, June 21st. So most of this here in the Northeast initially is heading on into Saturday night and Sunday. So you're getting some beneficial rains, one to maybe two plus inches up here. Uh, most of this here in New York and Pennsylvania has ended. And then you can eke out a very nice weekend. And then we see that big tropical moisture surge next weekend towards the last week of June. So we'll actually get some moisture, tropical, subtropical moisture surging. Look at this. You won't see rain in Cleveland and Columbus and Cincinnati here until late in the week or next weekend. So taking a look at the smoke, yes, it has been an issue uh, beginning the weekend here. You can see much of the east. Look at this. Yeah, this is a lot of smoke. There is smoke up here in Canada, and it's coming down. I'll zoom into the northeast momentarily, but you're continuing to see bad air quality across much of the east. And as we continue into early Sunday, you can see that wanes a little bit here. The, the pattern is this low pressure moves up the east coast. Uh, thankfully, some of this smoke will actually drift more towards the west and start to dissipate. Um, there is a resurgence here in some of these areas um, as we head into Monday, but let's actually zoom in here. All right, so taking it from the beginning in the northeast, yes, uh, it's prompted air quality alerts around the Wilkes-Barre Scranton area. Um, there is also areas down towards New York City, New Jersey that are getting into this. You can see where this plume is coming from over southern Quebec off the screen here with your wildfires that are continuing. But look at as we head into the overnight, into the early morning hours of Sunday, things really improve until we get towards, say, early tomorrow afternoon, the early to middle portion. Start to see a breakout around the Buffalo, Rochester area again. You see that plume coming down. But the good news is it kind of mixes out drifts westward and as we head into midday monday there's only a few areas that actually could you know see some uh, you know closer to uh code yellow or code orange on these uh, uh air quality alerts so it's actually looking a bit better uh, than we originally thought here so it's actually you know mixing out which is great news as we head out into the western Pacific here, we don't have too much to talk about at the moment. You can see the Philippines by the 21st, we do start to get some heavier rain on the southern portion. But right now, it looks like the biggest chance we have is towards the 23rd. You see the system here? It's not, you know, fully closed off, but we could have a tropical wave forming into a tropical depression and maybe a tropical storm by the 24th next weekend across the Philippines. We're going to have to keep a very close eye on this system because it does actually stand chance of development. And it is in the seven to eight day time frame. Here it is on the 25th. So definitely keeping a very close eye on this. This definitely has the best chance of developing out of any system we've seen across parts of the Western Pacific. And look at this. Off the coast of Manila here, this looks like it could continue to strengthen and then eventually get caught up here into parts of eastern China and Taiwan. So definitely we'll keep an eye on it here. The intertropical convergence zone remaining very active. So taking a look at temperatures here, it is going to be rather massively hot as a firecracker across the south. That's going to be building to the north here. You see even the northern plains are approaching 90 into your Sunday. It's going to help feed these severe weather outbreaks as well. Look at this as we pinwheel towards Monday. Massive heat. Is this heading east? Look at this trough in the Pacific Northwest. Temperate up here into much of the northeast as we head into Tuesday you're staying right around the edges here. This is where you can see the trough, massive ridge trough. It's like an omega block here in the central part of the country. But as we continue through Wednesday here, look at this, staying toasty and the lower to mid 90s across Florida, most of Texas. Look at this, triple digits passing the century mark. And look at this here across the East Coast. You're staying a little bit cooler 
with that clouds and rain chances into the 70s. And look at as we head towards Thursday, this is a bit lopsided. Stuck in the 70s across the Carolinas here. But look at this, we're in the mid to upper 80s building across the northeast. And that heat wave for the east is going to build up and over this cutoff trough here along the southeast coast. Extended outlook from our hometown viewers, being into the Scranton's Upper Susquehanna River Valley of New York and Pennsylvania. Look at this. Yeah, we'll see a chance of showers and thunderstorms both Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. The chance is only 20% with that lingering moisture we have in place with the trough and the East Coast low pressure system. But it's not going to be an all day rain event. Look at your temperature skyrocketing, though. Uh, towards the mid-80s by Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, you're into the upper 80s. We have a heat wave upon us come late week. As always, thanks for joining me for this edition of Media Marks Weather. Take a look at the links down below. I have my affiliate link uh, for Trilogy Maps, so if you want to get some of those, I do make a commission off those. I just want to disclose that, but... Go ahead and use the code MEDIAMARK to save 20%. Also, visit my Hurricane 2023 Outlook if you haven't already. Link at the end of this video and description down below. Don't forget Facebook MEDIAMARK, also Weather Northeastern. Also, Hurricane Northeastern for my tropical page. And MEDIAMARK.com, WeatherNortheastern.com, Twitter at WeatherEastern. Thank you for joining me.